Hey guys, I've got a rather interesting distribution to show you today. This is Budgie Remix 1610. This is based on Ubuntu 1610, unsurprisingly, but with the implementation of the Budgie desktop. So it looks like this is a reasonably new project. It started uh, with 1604, and it seems to aim to bring the Budgie desktop into an Ubuntu respin in a similar fashion to the Ubuntu Mate, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, all that kind of, uh, you know, all those other kind of respins. So today I'm just going to take a, a very brief look at it. I've looked at other 1610 distributions. Um, as it currently stands, this is not an official, uh, as far as I'm aware, this is not an official Ubuntu respin. However, um, how these things usually work is that um, they'll be sort of launched at a long-term support release and then they'll spend two years sort of building up the distribution and getting in sync with the Ubuntu release cycle and the sort of the philosophy and the, the way of doing things and then you'll often find like a distribution then becomes incorporated into the Ubuntu community officially and that starts to become evident when you start seeing more official Ubuntu um, sort of graphics and, and images and stuff. But as you can see, um, the Budgie, uh, Budgie Remix um, has sort of taken on a name because I think there was an Ubuntu net book remix or something like that so it's kind of taken on a very similar sort of naming scheme it's got the same versioning numbers um, and even the um, logo is actually just a little bit of a take on the on the Ubuntu logo so I don't know obviously what the sort of the situation is with that but it does seem that um, uh, that tends to be how how the process uh, comes about so this is a desktop that's based on GTK 3 and in terms of how it sort of acts and how it sort of behaves, I guess the closest uh, other desktop environment is XFCE. In fact, I think you could almost, uh, if you squint your eyes a little bit, say that this is the GTK3 version of, of XFCE. It's like the sort of almost like a reincarnation or a reimagining of it because it's a, a very customizable desktop, actually. Um, I think I might even have said in previous reviews that the Budgie desktop is actually quite straightforward and and. Um, and, and sort of does a lot, a lot of stuff for you. Um, however, what it does seem to, but that that doesn't actually seem to be particularly correct. What I said there, because I've been sort of playing around with the Budgie desktop, and you can actually customize it a fair bit. Um, maybe not as much as XFCE or KDE, but uh, but certainly more than you might think. So I'll probably start off the review with that then. So um, this is almost the default desktop. Now as you can see in the top left hand corner I've just written the word spooky because you know it's around Halloween and sort of YouTubers have to obligatory sort of do a little bit of spooky ooh kind of stuff because you know people you know all that kind of stuff so yeah there you go that's the that's the Halloween um, bit of the channel done uh, and also these icons on the left hand side for some reason I've resized them to 48 pixels they're like they used to be like 36 um, so I don't know, that's not particularly important. It was easy enough to install. It's the standard in, uh, Ubuntu um, installation. So this little button here allows you to pull up what is effectively a settings menu with some applets. So you can control, you've got the dates. Uh, is that, okay? you know, you've got a calendar here or really just sort of a, uh, just a sort of a very basic calendar app by the look of it um, and then you've got the volume control here then you've got the output and this is actually pretty good you can actually select your default um, you know your default output inputs um, and change them on the go so if you if you have like a particularly large number of sound devices as I do then that could be very useful from switching from one to the other rather rather quickly so that's pretty cool as well uh, one of the things I really like about the Budgie desktop, and I really want to see other distributions implement this, is their way of doing notifications as well. So whenever a notification comes up, rather than just display on the screen for about five seconds and then disappear, it'll get it'll, uh, you know it'll, it'll get listed into this um, notification list. So even if you got a notification. 10 minutes ago, it'll be listed here so that um, it won't pass you by. And that's pretty good because sometimes what I will do is I'll set like a video to render, which can sometimes take half an hour to an hour. So I'll go off, grab a cup of tea, you know, do some gardening or whatever. And then I'll come back and, and, and it's like, it's a nice little reminder there um, that, uh, you know, the, the, the video has been rendered or, or, or whatever use case that you might want to apply for yourself. But it's certainly a much better way of doing 
uh, notifications. And what I also like about it is that it's kind of similar to how mobile devices do uh, notifications, which means we could very well start seeing um, that become a sort of a standard UI feature across multiple platforms. And I think that that's going to be a great um, help in terms of continuity of, of UI across multiple operating systems and devices and all that kind of stuff. So um, generally, I think that's a positive thing. I'm sure other desktops will adopt it over time because it is, to me, just such a, a much more usable feature. So I look forward to that. But it's nice the Budgie have done it. Now, the thing about the Budgie desktop as well that I do want to inform you about is that it isn't exactly the fastest of desktops now. Uh, I've actually, interestingly enough, I, I'm really quite impressed with Budgie Remix because I installed it on a bare bones machine, my um, rubbishy laptop, which I've endearingly called my crap top. And that now has Budgie Remix on it. But it's not a very fast laptop at all. It's it's really what I, I use to test lightweight distributions. If that these days, even lightweight distributions kind of have a problem with it. But I did uh, load up Budgie Remix and it worked but it was kind of slow. Like, I mean, it's this is not a lightweight distribution, despite me sort of comparing it with XFCE. This is um, this is a, this is almost like a reimagining of GNOME 3. So, if you're not a fan of like the GNOME 3 um, layout or desktop paradigm, this is a good alternative because it it comes with all the um, the sort of the under the hood features of uh, GTK3 and then of course with this distribution the underlying features of Ubuntu but it gives you uh, a more customizable desktop uh, it gives you a really nice looking desktop as well like I mean this this does look like a beautiful professional polished desktop um, that's customizable and a little bit more traditional so yeah I, I, I think Budgie has, has despite the fact that we, we seem to be having an increasing number of desktop environments some desktop environments are playing catch up and some desktop environments are jumping ahead and whereas like most desktop environments are really quite good quite usable and to be honest nowadays i don't have a strong preference to desktop environments i'll probably tend to prefer something lighter just so that i can make the most of system resources and it tends to play nicer with games i tend to like one that i can turn compositing on and off again for games and, and video recording and that kind of stuff but for the most part, so that's why I, you know that's why I'm still on XFCE. It, I mean, it just does the job, and it doesn't use too many system resources. But this is good as well. I mean, and 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 it's almost like a much more like XFCE. I think is kind of starting to show its age now. And I think there are going to be a number of people that have uh, that, that say that that's going to happen. Uh, that that has been going on for a while, and 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 maybe Budgie is is a, is a more a modern reimagining of it. I don't know. I'm just sort of speculating and, and rambling a little bit here. I love both desktop environments, so I'm not being uh, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be judgmental or overly critical. So I kind of like the 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 plank applet here that comes on the side. Um, you can actually move the plank applet to the bottom if you prefer something that looks maybe a little bit more like the elementary OS or. Um, uh, or, or the Mac OS as well. You can actually get rid of this uh, completely and you can put those icons maybe in a little applet up here in this corner. Um, so yeah, and also by the way, um, I like the fact that this, even though this is kind of like um, sort of one little applet here, you click on um, on this here and then you can click on this here Oh, and that sort of, yeah, so some of them pull out and some of them don't. This is a this little applet at the top here is a little bit different to Solus, which is Budgie's native environment. So they have done it. They have done a few sort of UI changes, but broadly speaking, um, and then you can pull up the uh, the calendar here, and there you've got the the GNOME calendar, which you can, if you want to, sign into like a Google account or a Facebook account, and that calendar applet will sort of fill up with all your Facebook and Google dates and stuff. So. The customizability options. Uh, there is one one minor little bit of a critique, but it's the it's the smallest thing, is that you've got a cog icon up here and a cog icon down there. They do two different things, rather different things, and there's sort of like no obvious explanation. Like I say, it's the smallest of smallest critiques because you know you click on it and then there you go. So you get you pull up your settings. As you can see here, this is par for the course for for GNOME three. It's almost identical settings here. So that is uh, that is good, um, and then there's the this one here, which basically uh, customizes the UI. You can change the widget theme. You can have a dark theme. You can have a light theme. Uh, you can use the built-in theme, widget themes, 
change the font. All of this done from like one little panel. I think that's brilliant. I think that's really quite clever. And I like the fact that it, that it sort of just bleeds into the rest of the, the UI as well. Um, so you don't have windows popping up everywhere. Uh, so and and the, and it's again that's just nice and easy to 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 look at and to analyze not massively dissimilar to how xfce does it um but they of course use windows they don't have a, a neat little panel you can even have is that, can you put a new panel yes you can look at that there's a panel down there so what you could do then is um manage panel so I've got the bottom panel here and then I could put an applet I could put task bar task icon list maybe task list is that it um, there we go um, and you could probably even um, There you go. Put it in the center if you wanted, or go for the, actually that does that doesn't look very good at all in the center. Do you think? I don't know. Probably not. But there you go. So you've got it. Yeah. So you can have something very traditional like the the GNOME desktop as well, like as in GNOME 2.0. Then just I don't know, pull up a terminal or something, and then maximize it. So this is this is this is very much. Um, a sort of an, an almost like uh, maybe even a gnome 2 or mate type um desktop environment here and that's kind of good because you like you know you take something like mate and again mate is is really good i've been trying out the mate version of solace and i'll be doing a video on that at some point as well uh, and that's really impressive but this is again this is almost like sort of a, a, another type of mate done a slightly different way and i think you know you can possibly make the argument that there are sort of too many desktop environments at this stage that do things in a very similar fashion but um you know this is just the evolution of ideas and and, and superfluous stuff will die off and the be you know good stuff will live on um, and it's better to have an abundance of choice rather than not enough of it anyway uh, especially when it comes to like the linux community where people aren't afraid to actually dig in and look at alternatives and look at their options and look at what they can do and 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 have a good way of um you know sort of laying out um, and facilitating a particular use case so that's really good. So um, the menu is again a pretty standard menu. There is a compact version which basically just has this um, the, the basically the all uh, panel with the the search. But if you want categories, then you've got that. This looks pretty broadly like, for the most part, uh, Ubuntu style application choices. It has a budgie welcome screen. I'm going to take a look at the budgie welcome screen. Uh, this is pretty good as well. This is this is kind of taken from Ubuntu Mate. I don't know if they directly took it from Ubuntu Mate. I know that Ubuntu um, the chaps at Ubuntu Mate who have uh, developed this have um, kind of made it so that it's implementable in other distributions. So that's pretty cool. So it gives you a software center. It gives you uh, so you can reset default settings. So if you're customizing about and and you uh, you mess up, it gives you the support options, which is incredibly important. Incredibly important that people know where they can go for help. Um, and then you've got introduction. You've got features, getting started, recommendations. So let's go have a. And then you've got all the the social medias, and they seem to be on a lot of them. Let's go to software center, because this is this is what I always like to to take a look at. Oh no! Let's do updates first. Oh yeah, up, updates. Um, they they basically work the same as all the rest of Ubuntu updates. Um, Solus do a really good uh, way of doing updates as well. Um, they basically give you the option in the update screen of what to update, so you can sort of choose whether or not you're going to have a long term support release uh, version of 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 Solus or or a a more bleeding edge one, just depending on the update options you choose, rather than what distribution you choose, which I think is a much better way of doing it. Although potentially more complicated, if and, and if done wrong, could be quite horrendous. This is the GNOME App Store, unsurprisingly, but it's a really good app store. It gives you some editors' picks, internet stuff. Uh, it's got. Um, let's see. 
web browser. It gives you a decent choice of web browsers. Oh, it even has the Tor browser in there. Uh, although they do tend to recommend you take that off the website directly because it wants to be updated more regularly than distributions often do. Oh, it's got Ring as well. This is quite a new uh, piece of software. I've heard people talking about it quite a lot, not seen much of it myself. Remote access, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Is there, is there much multimedia kind of stuff in here? Um, I don't see it. I don't see like Caden Live or anything like that. So this doesn't seem to be a particularly, um, com like, I mean, this doesn't seem to be complete. Like, it's got Mumble. Um, it's got, you know, good choice of mail. So it's got, it covers a lot of bases. I like, again, the fact that they haven't oversaturated you with software choices um, or different versions, all that kind of stuff. It's nice, it's straightforward. You guys are sort of basically looking through it at the same rate I am. And and you're probably, you know, I mean, it's the Gnome App Store. It's a piece of cake, piece of cake. And then, yeah, you've got the update, um, the installed stuff as well. And I really like this and I'm, I wish, um, I was going to say, I wish more distributions did this. I mean, they pretty much do now. They both, you know, many of them do come with the, the GNOME Software Center. But it is nice when you install a distribution um, to be able to look at what software you've got, possibly remove some of the superfluous applications. I know they recommend against removing applications that come installed with the distribution, but sometimes I do it anyway, especially on like Manjaro where you kind of have a bit more leeway in that department. But um, yeah, and, and, it's, and it's nice. So sometimes you can just take out, if there's like one or two pieces of software that for some reason you particularly want to remove, like for example, if I'm setting up um, a an operating system on someone else's computer, I will often put Chromium on and take Firefox off. Um, that way, Chromium is always the default browser. Um, but also, pe you know, people don't get confused as to, to which browser to use. Um, some people who don't use a computer that often might use Chrome, and then like a week later they might use Firefox and then wonder where their bookmarks have gone. So these are all things to bear in mind when you're sort of setting up computers for people that don't use them very often or are not very confident with them. So there's not really too much more to show on this one. It's the budgie desktop. I like the fact that under all, uh, the more commonly used programs, they drift towards the top. So eventually, after sustained use after a couple of days, you'll start seeing your regular um, icons that you use uh, just sort of line up in order of, of how commonly you use them um, on the beginning all menu, which I think is really good as well. Um, and it's something that you do without having to configure it. And I think that's what I like about the budgie desktop that I sort of almost can't quite put my finger on is that the defaults are really good and it just seems to have this wider grasp of modern UIs and how people want to use them. So I think that, that this budgie desktop, I gotta say I was a little skeptical at first. I'm always skeptical at first. No, I'm not. I'm sometimes really gullible at first as well. But anyway, um, this, is, this is really promising and I really like this. And to be honest, if these guys maintain what they're doing now, and they get you know in in good step with Ubuntu and 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 all that kind of stuff. You know we're we're gonna see us. You know I would not be surprised if this can rival Ubuntu Mate, and I really like Ubuntu Mate. So I gotta say you know, and I say at the, this at the end of of most of my videos nowadays. The state of Linux is looking incredibly positive, incredibly positive. So bravo there, bravo there. Okay. So I think that's about it. Um, have I got much else to show you? You've seen the software choices. You've seen the settings. You've seen the big stuff that it's got to offer. And yeah, uh, anything else is pretty much identical across the rest of the Ubuntu distributions. So feel free to check out those videos as well. So that's about it from me today. But just before I leave you, I'm going to plug some stuff. Uh, I have a podcast. Some of you may or may not know about it. It's called Who, What, Where. Uh, although we sometimes cover technology, it's generally significantly more broad. It's just one week, uh, sorry, one um, episode a week where I uh, just have a chat with someone who I think is vaguely interesting. And uh, it's usually about a different subject, but sometimes we'll glance across, of course, technology as well. But um, 
the last episode was about films for example so films of the 90s and 80s mostly um and then i think the one before that was technology which is actually posted on this channel so um that's great it's available on soundcloud and i've recently started uploading them to uh, to a separate youtube channel as well i people don't tend to like it when i put them up on this channel so i'll put a link to both of those soundcloud and uh the youtube down in the comment section below um and uh yeah, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, remember to have a spooky Halloween. And um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.